Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the short story Traditions by Marcos S. Gonzalez. Um, and I don't really have a whole lot of information at the top, just, you know, I may uh, mess up a couple times on pronunciation, so work with me on that. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and hop into a passage from this story. Makina and lingers in the room, thumbing her fingers through one of Meek Ten's holo books on ancient British culture of the 1800s, pondering why the people during the period had such odd names. John, Arnold, Stuart, Thomas, Elizabeth. Makina can barely say them, least of all pronounce them correctly. Meek Ten guzzled up guzzles up as much history as she can, using the forgotten stories and mythologies as inspiration for her virtual games. If history isn't being taught in the schools anymore, Miktan re reasons, she would bring it to the masses through virtual realities. Traditions by Marcos Gonzalez follows three women as they navigate in the space between tradition and change. At least 50 years into the future, the acceleration of robotics and virtual reality, climate change, and a migrating population um, have drastically changed ways of being. The three women in the story are um, Josie, a curandera, grandmother who has been alive for over 150 years, Miktan, her granddaughter who is dedicated to preserving history by creating and sharing simulations, and Makina, an automaton created by Miktan who acts as a daughter, mother, and sister to them. The story opens with Josie teaching Makina to make a, uh, quote, a lemon and strawberry cake that gives super strength, unquote. Um, Miktan stands at the edge of the kitchen and simply watches the two cook. Josie tries to shame Miktan for not taking interest in carrying on the traditions, but Josie remarks that she is glad at least the automaton Makina is. Miktan gets frustrated with Josie's comments and leaves to her room. Makina, caring about both of them, goes to confront Miktan. Miktan and Makina talk about how Josie and Miktan are both trying to do the same thing, even though it may not seem like it. In her own way, Miktan is also trying to carry on the traditions by preserving history through video game simulations for future generations. Miktan says that she feels like she is the death of Mexican culture and that Makina is, in fact, the good Mexican granddaughter Josie wants. However, Makina notes that she is made up of parts from around the world, is an automaton, and is living proof that there's no one right way to be Mexican, that being Mexican means many things. The story ends with Josie popping her head in to ask to see Miktan's new game, and to invite them both out to eat the cake. And our notes for the story are as follows. Uh, a key element of the story is adaptation and resilience, especially in regard to cultural practices. An interesting parallel to the story is in Lakota resilience. One such, I'm sorry, one such example is in the practice of star quilts. According to St. Joseph Indian School and South Dakota Public Broadcasting, buffalo hides decorated with stars made with plant dyes were historically used as gifts during important moments. However, the combination of two factors, one, the deliberate extermination of buffalo by settlers, and two, the introduction of textiles and sewing by those settlers, led to the creation of the modern star quilt. These star quilts are often seen at contemporary Lakota graduations. This adaptation due to cultural genocide does not mean that modern star quilts are in any way degenerate forms of a cultural practice, and it's faulty to consider, quote, authentic, unquote, cultural practices as being relegated purely to the past. In addition to resilience, one can also make a parallel on the topic of identity. The documentary documentary Real Engine, the Sherman Alexi poem, How to Write the Great American Indian Novel, and the speculative fiction short story Welcome to Your Authentic Indian Experience, TM by Rebecca Roanhorse, make for interesting pairings on this topic. Which takes us into our big question for this story. Um, one of the big questions of the story is how do groups preserve traditions while also adapting to new environments and technology? Additionally, do traditions have to remain unchanged to be preserved. As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. I hope you enjoyed the story, and with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.